Hey, it's Mike here, and today, a leptin in particular, why leptin is slept on because it is a super important hormone that modulates fat and appetite. Yet since it was discovered in like the mid 90s, not that many people know about it, and in particular know about how it can be driving our obesity epidemic and perhaps how to lower it. So we're gonna be looking at studies that show how the modern diet has more or less broken the appetite of many people in the Western world through leptin issues. And we're also gonna be looking at some very recent 2022 studies comparing you know, people that eat meat to vegans and their leptin levels. So let's go and with all this information, we will have leptin to the new year with a bunch of leptin knowledge. Yes, I am that lame, let's go. So what is leptin? Leptin is a hormone that is made by adipose or fat tissue and to a lesser extent, the lining of your intestines. And it communicates with the hypothalamus, which is the area in your brain that is responsible for regulating things like temperature. And you guessed it, hunger slash appetite. And it's pretty crazy to think that our fat cells have a role in regulating hunger, which is why some refer to it as the satiety hormone. And to this paper in terms of how it works, quote, when the fat cells increase, leptin levels increase proportionally, then bind to leptin receptors in the brain that send signals to inhibit food intake and increase energy expenditure. Yes, when you've eaten a lot, it will actually tell your body to increase your resting metabolic rates. You burn more calories when doing nothing. And evolutionarily, this does make sense because even though it's good evolutionarily to have a bunch of food, if you eat too much and become sort of immobile due to your size, then your chances of survival could lower. And it's also worth mentioning that there's a flip side to leptin in that if you're not getting enough food, your leptin can go really low and that will increase your appetite and your drive to get more calories. So to sum it up, as you eat more and more, store more fat, leptin will rise and tell you you're not hungry anymore, or if you are not getting enough food, leptin will fall and tell you to eat more. That's the basics. And it is a messed up example, but just to show how powerful leptin can be, you can essentially destroy a mouse's ability to create leptin, and it eats until it becomes obese and lethargic, so. And learning the basics about this might make you think, oh, you wanna have higher levels of leptin because therefore you won't be as hungry and then you won't become overweight or obese. But the reality is it's not that simple. And to this American Diabetes Association paper titled Leptin Less Is More, quote, it was rapidly established that the vast majority of obese individuals do not have a shortage of leptin, which of course would make them hungry. Rather, most common forms of obesity are associated with excessive circulating levels of leptin, coined hyperleptinemia, which results in a still ill-defined state of leptin resistance. So you can imagine we have a bunch of people who are eating and eating and growing adipose tissue, fat tissue, increasing leptin. And over time, their body is no longer responding to that leptin to tell them to stop eating as much. And we'll get into the mechanisms there, which are super interesting, especially the diet related ones. But we can touch on it briefly. And first you need to know that of course, leptin needs to cross the blood brain barrier to reach the hypothalamus. With that in mind from this paper, quote, Obesity and chronic consumption of the high fat diet produce important changes at the level of the blood brain barrier, as well as in different regions of the brain, especially in the regions of neuronal populations with high metabolic demand, such as the hippocampus. Some studies in rodents have shown that feeding with a high fat diet produces neuronal loss in the hypothalamus. So it's almost like a high fat diet sort of fries your brain a little bit, sort of like Kentucky fried chicken level. And then over time, your body doesn't respond to leptin as well. There's also theories around inflammation, for example, C-reactive protein. Quote, different mechanisms have been suggested such as elevated levels of C-reactive protein, which is an inflammation marker. And of course you have to note that vegans have lower levels of C-reactive protein. And from this trial, people put on a vegan diet saw about a one third lowering of C-reactive protein. And now that we're talking about vegan stuff, we can get to the recent studies on vegans versus people that ate meat. And first we have this one from Poland. 
They looked at 143 female volunteers broken up into vegans, vegetarians, and people that ate meat. And this is a cross-sectional study, meaning they're just looking at a snapshot in time. And it would be awesome if it was bigger, but this is a decent size for taking blood samples. And the results were, quote, there was a statistically significant difference in the serum or blood leptin concentrations of the studied women, both in the group of vegetarians and vegans circulating leptin was significantly lower than in the group of omnivores with the lack of differences in neither BMI nor in body fat content. Yes, their BMI did not explain the difference. And if you're looking closely, vegans were a little bit lower than the vegetarians. Though with the size of the group, it's probably not statistically significantly different, just trending. They say, quote, this suggests that leptin levels are affected not only by the amount of stored fat, but also by the consumed food, which is perhaps the most important point here. And we can go into more detail in a bit into that. And this has huge implications for obesity because people who are trying to eat less to lose weight, but they're still eating this high animal fat diet, but they would have no control over their appetite because their leptin resistance would remain high. However, switching to plant foods could be a solution to that. They conclude, quote, this observation indicates the health promoting properties of plant diets by influencing circulating leptin. And we do have another study by these same researchers, sort of the smaller version of this one, also out of Poland from 2019, where once again, they did find that the vegans had the lowest level, even more dramatically this time, probably because it was a smaller study. And it is worth mentioning an important point here, quote, all participants had similar calorie total fat and total carbohydrate intake, yet the vegans were lower. You know, just worth mentioning, there's multiple studies there. And then we have a third study here, also from late 2022, which is a randomized control trial, but once again, it is a smaller one. So it's not gonna give us any final answers here, but it does give us some really interesting information. Out of Germany, and it randomized 53 people into two groups, one of no, 26 vegans and 27 who were actually given a higher meat diet. They were already meat eaters, yet they were told to eat more meat. And the most interesting result that was statistically significant was that those high meat eaters in men in particular, their leptin levels went up, even though they were eating the same amount of calories as the vegan group, which is crazy. And those leptin levels leapt up from 5.5 to 7.3, ouch, in just four weeks. And it's worth mentioning that this was really short and small. And so even though we did see a trend in lowering in the people who went vegan, again, by about one and a half points, it wasn't statistically significant. So I would love to see a larger and longer study here. But even in that short period of time, there was an improvement in the adiponectin levels in the vegan group, which is another hormone that is created by fat. But this one regulates insulin resistance and inflammation. So so it's more diabetes related, worth mentioning. Cool stuff and statistically significant, but let's move on to why this might happen at all, why vegans have lower levels observationally. There are several possibilities for how leptin resistance occurs or why these leptin levels can vary even independently of calories as we saw in one of those studies. But back to our main larger Polish study, they say fiber could be one of the reasons because it can have an impact on leptin levels. And they mentioned a Japanese study where high fiber intake was also associated with lower leptin concentrations independent of body mass as well. And then also things like vegetables and beans are negatively correlated with circulating leptin, again, eaten on plant-based diets. And we already mentioned the inflammation thing, the C-reactive protein connection being a possibility, but one I didn't see just reading on the surface level of articles had to do with, you know, what type of fat could actually be causing this. And so I went down the rabbit hole for you guys and looked at research on saturated fat. And it does appear that there is a unique relationship with saturated fat here, sort of mirroring the whole insulin resistance, intramyocellular lipids, complicated stuff that happens with saturated fat and diabetes, but that's different. We can look at this study in the journal Science Signaling, which mentions that long chain saturated fat induces the most hypothalamus inflammation and that a high saturated fat diet promotes leptin resistance, whereas unsaturated fats don't. Of course, the main source of saturated fats in the US diet is animal food, which brings me to this study. And really it's just 
well paraphrased by this Scientific American article. They say, quote, they found that after only three days on a diet high in saturated fat, a common ingredient in beef and cheese, the brains of rats and mice became resistant to leptin and insulin. In contrast, unsaturated fats, such as those found in olive oil, did not trigger resistance. Sorry to refer to another mouse study, but the finding here is that saturated fat has a unique way of damaging this whole leptin process. And so we can just imagine your standard American person eating a standard American diet and just over time between the dopamine hits of these highly addictive processed, highly saturated fat foods, you know, their leptin is going up, but they are just eating more and more for all of those different reasons. And then over time with the inflammation and various other factors that leptin feedback circuit is no longer working and they're just gonna keep remaining hungry when they are no longer needing calories. And a solution here could be instead of trying a low carb diet where people are gonna continue to eat high saturated fat products and of course can't keep the weight off as we've seen over and over again, you can instead be eating you know, a similar amount of volume or perhaps even calories, but not from these saturated fat animal fats, and then your appetite might regulate. That's the theory here. But that theory is pretty well backed up from two things. First of all, how vegans have the lowest rate of obesity out of any diet group they're commonly put up against, and then also randomized control trial like the Broad study. They did not restrict calories or add exercise, and they had the largest weight loss at six and 12 months that the researchers had ever seen using a whole food vegan diet. And it is hard because when we're talking about people with obesity, you know, in the literature, how do you get rid of leptin resistance? Well, you either lose weight, which of course would be really hard when your appetite is high, or you can fast, which is also really hard when your appetite is hard. So I think that whole eating plants solution with all the fiber and hopefully lower inflammation, lower saturated fat could be awesome here. And of course, I would love to see more research. The ideal study here would be taking a bunch of people with obesity, because a lot of those previous studies had healthy people in them. They're not the ones we're worried about with leptin resistance, even though it is good to see trends in leptin that's still useful. But if we take, you know, 200 people who have obesity, divide them up, put one on a vegan diet and one perhaps just on a control diet and then just see what leptin does, what weight does, what appetite markers do, and that would be super interesting. NIH, leptin research like that would leap us tons into the future. In the end, not that many people know about leptin and how it works, yet it is super important. It's perhaps one way that the average American's appetite is just broken. It's again from eating that high saturated fat, inflammatory diet that is devoid of fiber and on and on. We can see from that randomized control trial that putting people on a higher meat diet increases their leptin in men. And then also study after study is showing that leptin levels are significantly lower in people on a vegan diet, which just makes sense from a ton of different levels, saturated fat, inflammation, on and on and on. So all signs point to a vegan diet leading to leptin normalization, which is awesome. So let me know down below what you think about all this leptin research. Does this make sense to you? To me, it's like this was a little bit of a missing piece of the puzzle. I was somewhat aware of leptin, but had not looked as deeply into it, had never seen this saturated fat connection before as well. So I hope you like this one. Feel free to like and subscribe. And of course you can support me on Patreon or in any way that you see fit. And that's that's all, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.